I have to turn these two planks into rails that connect a headboard and a footboard for a king size bed. What I gotta do is find the straightest section that's 83 inches. So what I got is these pieces of wood here. They, I could actually go a little bit longer. There's one here and there's one here. And these are, are straight. You know, these are parallel cuts. What they do is they help show the twist. So I'm pretty sure this is the section that I'm going to cut out because as I slide this down to here, you can see how extreme that angle is. So this half is where that twist is. And as you come back to like right here, that's almost no twist at all. This is, this is my test setup. See, I got the thickness planer in between the table saw and the workbench. And this is my melamine shelving material that's three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, that is to give a flat surface for the thickness planer to index off of. Now, my practice board is a warped 2x4. I'm going to give you a close up here. So I've got a shim at this end. You can see how thin it gets down here. And it, I'm all done, and it's pretty darn uh, straight. One side is, down, is straight. And you can see I got it shimmed up down at this end too. So now the next step would be now that once you have a flat surface, you can flip this over and run it through the planer and get your final thickness. So it'll take all this, this hump here out of the middle and bring it down to that thickness right there. Now there's still a little bit of a hump to it uh, right down in the middle. But if you saw how twisted, or yeah, it was twisted and severely bowed. Um, anyways, I got my practice out of the way. Now to apply that theory to my actual finish boards. So it's sitting on the melamine and you can see that the back end there, this end here, it's got a, a lot of twist to it and a lot of movement. And the idea is to take some shims and glue them underneath it. So now this side is stable. So you can see how I got that, that shim right there. And what I'm going to do is just hot glue those in place. That shim there and this shim right here. Hopefully these fans aren't making too much noise they are doing an amazing job at keeping this place uh, cleaned up as far as the air goes so this is going to be the first pass and it's really only gonna, it's going to start taking this corner off the most so i'm just going to bring this down just a hair and lock it in now i'm going to have to push this through quite a bit of the ways because the rollers are only in a touch right here um, for the first several passes. Quick update, you can see how this area is flattening out. 
still not touching here got a few skips there a little spot there and over there so we're getting real close to being flat so I got these twisty sticks is that what they're called anyways I got them on here and we have full contact um, the planer with the board so I don't want to take any more off but you can see how there's no twist from end to end and I think it's time to flip it over and this flat surface here will now be what that thing works off of hard to believe but it actually worked that board is is straight as can be with no twists it got pretty thin though so now this one here it's got a little cup to it uh, this one's going to get plain down to the same thickness as that and then I'll run the edge through the joiner and then finish up with the table saw and then put a rounded edge on it I'm only taking like a, a 30 second at a time. This thing seems like it's got quite a bit of power. There was a few times I bumped it up to like almost a 16th and it just went right straight through it. All right, this side is all done, cleaned up. I'm gonna have a look down it. Man, that thing! I don't think it's got a bow at all. And now flip it over, run this side through, and then just kind of keep working it down until I get to this thickness here. Got a ton of sawdust or chips, whatever they call them when they go through one of these things. Well, that was the first time I've ever done that. And I really still can't believe it worked. Um, I did this mostly for practice. Um, I could have probably just bought two pieces of wood and stained them and painted them and, and lacquered them and be done with it. But I just wanted some practice because, uh, like I said, it's the first time I've ever used a thickness planer to take out a twisty twist in a board. Uh, still not done. Uh, my offcuts over there, I've got to run a few of those through um, for test pieces for matching stain and uh, the whitewash and the lacquer, getting that look just right. And all I have is a picture to go by. Um, and it's an okay cell phone picture but I'm gonna get going on that and hopefully maybe get some stain on something tonight awesome probably wondering why the heck I'm taking a wire wheel to my wood well this is why this uh, I just reviewed the pictures of this bed frame and it is very rustic and if I look at that see how it, it gets into the grain and, and gets out the soft wood but leaves the the harder rings in there now if I show them this completely flat thing, I don't think they're going to like it, but this, 
Uh, that's exactly what, the way I want it. And if I wanted to do, to make it even a little bit more rustic, I could put like some nuts and bolts in a bag and there's some chain and kind of just beat it. But that is exactly what I'm looking for. So these are my four darkest stains. Can you guys see that? No, you can't see that. So this is 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 dark here, but it's been wiped pretty quick. But right here is the edge of the bed frame, and this is the whitewashed look that I have to match. Will that focus? And if you look in here, it's it's pretty rustic and there actually is I can see the saw marks from like a mill and it's it's really rustic looking first one is a Sherwin Williams that I've used a lot I'm make sure you get it all mixed up this one might be a little bit too dark I think this is almost like an ebony. So I got this machinist square specifically for setting up saws and I'm going to check uh, the joiner here, this rigid joiner that I purchased used off of Craigslist, see if it's square and I've already put it on here but it is surprisingly true. As far as making a perfect 90 degree angle. The heck is that noise? No, it's ice. That's what it is. Well, I'm going to attempt to run this giant board on its edge through this tiny little joiner here. And we'll see if it pops the, uh, the little breaker or not. And here has got a lot of waning on it. It's going to get chopped off anyways. Well, the next step in this process is to run it through the table saw 
with the edge that I just ran through the joiner uh, to the fence. But it, uh, it's 12.30 uh, a.m. And I don't think it's a good idea. I'm a little tired to be messing with this old beast here. So I will put that down to size tomorrow and start doing the distressing wheel on it. And I think I got my color picked out. But I'll, I'll look at it again in the morning. So this is not the usual background of my workshop. I'm in Miami and I'm on my sailboat. And... I'll be back to work in two days. This video here, I made it a little bit longer than normal, uh, around 15 minutes. There were a lot of firsts for me. Uh, first time to use a thickness planer. Hopefully that camera stays there. So yeah, first time to use a thickness planer on getting a twist out of a board. First time using a joiner. And well, that's all for this video, but in the next part, It'll be the first time doing this whitewashed painting over the top of stain. And you'll get to see that in the next part, as well as me installing it and the finished product. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and also share this video um, with anyone who might get some use out of it. Goodbye.